Hey guys and gals, I'm Pal and welcome back to Okami. In the last episode, we closed out the story and got our sweet reward. This time, at long last, I'm going to be shedding some light as to what those rewards are. But, first, I would like to make some things clear. I haven't been actively posting videos or recording them recently uh, due to my vacation and also due to the sad fact that I wasn't able to find anyone to do art for the upcoming Let's Play. It was very sad, uh, Ryan was not able to do it this time for reasons, I'm not going to explain which ones, but it, it's fine, there's no bad blood between us, he just can't do it this time, and so I had to look for someone else to do it that would keep the quote-unquote integrity, don't know why I put in, vis, uh, vocal quotes there, but whatever, the integrity of my art, so they would keep the same style, and I could oversee the process and make sure that I liked it. And that person is Nova! Say hi, Nova! No, I'm just joking. She's not here. But if she were, she'd say hello, and then, and then that's it. She would clam up for the rest of the episode. But yeah, this time we're going to be shedding some light into that. Um, I will be recording the next Let's Play soon. There are a couple other videos that I would like to do. Uh, and this is one of them. So this is one step closer to the next Let's Play. Hurrah! And also Five Nights at Freddy's is coming out now. It's being released as I record this episode. So, that's that's pretty fun. It's gotten a lot of popularity on my channel because it's, you know, it's Five Nights at Freddy's. Of course it's going to be getting some popularity. And I really like the Let's Play. But that is neither here nor there because we're going to be jumping into the rewards. First off, when you have a completed save file on your Wii of Okami, you will be getting presents from Isun. And presents from Isun is very cool. It's entirely unnecessary as well. Like, this, the, the developers did not have to do this, but they did. And I am very thankful. Thank you, Clover Studios and Ready at Dawn Studios. You guys are the bomb. Um, you, we go into, into Okami Art, and we'll get a bunch of art, like it says. We have, uh, we have the concept art, which, if we enter in one of these, you'll see the concept art for all of the... Uh, divine instruments, including some beta ones. Let's see if I can find one. I, I saw one earlier when I did this off-screen. There's one. There's there's a sword. It's like a sword with a broken broken cross guard. I'm trying to find a specific one so you guys can see all these. Uh, where is that? Um, there it is. There it is. That's the one I wanted to show. You can see on the bottom left, there's something sort of like wagon wheels and there's some trail of I don't know, blood or ribbons off of them. That's really cool. I have no idea how that would have been used. And honestly, I don't think it could have been used like a conventional weapon. So it appears to me that there would have been different types of, more different types of weapons than there were in the actual game. Next, you see something that looks a lot like armor. It looks like Orochi's armor to be exact, but it also looks like a rocket. Each one look, looks like a rocket because it has a trail behind it. That also could have been cool. So yeah, that's pretty cool, and you can also see there are 130 entries here, 130 of concept art. The developers lovingly made this and lovingly put it all in the game, including you can see notes on these characters. You can see development of different characters and notes about them, something like uh, Waka, how his hair should flow in his final battle how his hair should look, how it should spread out as if there's wind there. And you can see all their notes. That's It's really exciting. Next is there's concept art for monsters, and this has 71 entries. And you can look through that. This is my, my favorite thing. Concept art for environments. This is the most finished and some of the most beautiful art I've ever seen for a game. And it's all concept art. This is just for River of Heavens. Look at this. That is one area. And there's 88 of these. Granted, all of them are not finished. This one I wouldn't be putting as my desktop, but there's this one I would. This is gorgeous. You can see there's a guardian sapling, and it's like assaulted by the wave of evil. Even the title is Approaching Darkness, and it's completely unnecessary. Why did they put the, these in the game? But it's amazing. Why? I am so thankful that they did. It's just... I say it's unnecessary, but what I'm trying to say, it's above and beyond what they could have done. It's above and beyond their call of duty. It's just so nice. It, it shows that the developers really cared, and they really poured their hearts out in the game. This, as concept art, is insane. Just one of these. As concept art. Think of how long these would have taken. And it's, it's just really cool. Pre and post restore. 
That's just, it's so good. And you can see Curse Shinshu Field, all these things. I should totally upload these into, like, my, um, my computer for desktops. Because they are gorgeous, and I cannot stress that enough. This one, that's beautiful. I could have used these in the Let's Play, and honestly, I would have if I had known of their existence. Uh, I deleted my, my final save file before actually recording the first episode, I believe, because it would have put that Presence from Eastern thing on screen. I don't know, it may have been there in the first episode, I haven't gone back and checked. But I'm pretty sure I did delete it before I recorded the first episode. So, by the time I discovered what was actually in it, it was too late for me to do anything. I could have looked it up on the internet, but to be real, not many people upload this stuff. Surprisingly, it's hard to find, and when it is found, it's low resolution. So, I wasn't able to find all these, and I could have. They would have been gorgeous. That's... it's amazing. But anyway, uh, next is High Resolution Bestiary. It just shows all the enemies. This is something I wouldn't be putting into my... my desktops, because it's not... I mean, it's... it is definitely an acquired taste of art, but it's not something I would enjoy looking at. And picture if someone walked by my computer and saw that, they're like, what is wrong with your face? And I'm like, I don't know. Uh, next is Okami Music, so it has all the music from all eras of the game. And this is very interesting because it also has sound effects. So you want a ringtone? Just record this. And it's it's pretty cool. Next, though, is something I found really cool when browsing through these off screen. I didn't know this was in here. Honestly, most of the information I'm bringing to you is stuff I found while exploring this, which I found really exciting that I'm still discovering things about the game, even though I've owned it and played it a couple of times now. But down here, the fi the next to the final entry, so the final story entry, at the bottom, it says Reset by Ayaka Hirahara. This is not actually found in the story of this game. This is a bonus track, but it is found in the PS2 version. And you guys probably know what I'm talking about. This is the music that I played in the credits. This is the music that was in the original credits. The vocals for Okami Reset. It's in the game. It's in the Wii version. And yet they they didn't they didn't put credits to it. They had it in the game, but they didn't. But still, in case you never played the PS2 version or you didn't know about it and you found this and you listened to it and actually even if you didn't understand the words, it's still beautiful singing. And you found this and you're like, this is a cool bonus, but now you know it was in the game and it is in the game. And that's really cool. But next is the video treasure chest and to be real these are treasures these are not cutscenes they are not they contain snippets of cutscenes the later ones do but for the most part these are concept these are the game pre final version before it hit the store shelves so the tokyo 2004 so 2 years before this game came out 2004 tokyo game show promo the e3 trailer the Tokyo game, the next year, the Tokyo Game Show promo. So you get to see this game, first year, second year, and you get to see all these things, all these different trailers shown at different places that not many people have uploaded to YouTube because I don't know, there's just not a, the biggest following for this game, though there should be. But also, there are these two trailers, and these I need to stress the most as being important. Not only do they have red borders, which red is means important, but these are the title. The title alludes to it all. Internal Company Presentation A and B. This is pre-beta. This is pre-alpha. The game has not even been made yet. The game is not even in development yet. This is a pitch to make the game. This is like people going around in a, a business table on a conference talking about what games they should make and this is what they came up with so I'm going to play internal company presentation a because this is important and you can see I'm really enthusiastic about this because later on in this episode you will be seeing how how designers did go beyond above and beyond the call of duty they did put this in the game but they did even more so let's go and watch this together
There it is. That is the internal company presentation, the first one of two. If you watch the second one, you'll see that the game has come a little bit further. Um, you can see there's more structure to it. There is still a lot of beta elements, and at this point, I believe the game would have been in alpha. Um, so, you can see the alpha of the game. In fact, if you watch most of these, you will see features that are not in the final game. You'll see things how they how Amaterasu can interact with the NPCs uh, completely different than how she can in this version. And it's just, they're really cool. It's a great look into the beta of this game. And especially for, for this video, it, the game, there's no story yet. There's only one character and a setting. That's it. And the setting and the graphics look a lot like Twilight Princess or Shadow of the Colossus. They're, you know, they're 2004. This is before 2004 when this, when this trailer was made. So this is like Shadow of the Colossus or Twilight Princess. It is very similar in graphics to the two of them. And it's how this game could have ended up. We could have had a game like that. I'm not sure how, how much people have liked it because part of this game's draw is its unique art style. But you have what it could have been. And you'll never know, but I would have been fine either way, honestly. I probably would have played the game either way, and I would have been happy either way, because the both versions are beautiful. So, let's go ahead and go back to the title screen. Because now that my rant is over, even though the Let's Play is over, my, uh, my rants are still continuing because I'm so passionate about this game, because it's so good. We're going to be going into continue. We're going to continue the game, or rather, start again. Surprise, we're going to be doing the Let's Play again! Yay! No. We're going to be entering um, our last save file so that when I ended the episode, it asked me to save. When I ended last episode, it asked me to save. And I did. And that doesn't just leave you right in the arc of Yamato ready to fight the boss, like most games do. What it does is open up New Game Plus, and I don't want to do this, this video. I don't want to do the video. What it does is New Game Plus, and we're going to be taking a look at New Game Plus for all it's worth and seeing what it looks like, because it is it is noticeably different. And you guys can get a peek into how I sync the commentary and the game, because when I press continue, the next word out of my mouth will sync both of them. You ready? In case you want to let's play this game, this is how you do it. Ready? Oh, Kami! Among all of the different save files, in fact, all of these save files, just so you know, are the Let's Plays. I, I wanted to show that because it's cool. I didn't, I never really shared ha what that, what I did with the process. Usually, when I play a game for the channel, there are only three save files or two. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll, ba I'll bounce around with those and have like two backups. So I'll have a backup of the episode I'm about to record and a backup of the episode before that. So, in case anything fails, I can go back two episodes in case I made a mistake or glitched the game or whatever. Uh, and this, since there are 30 save files, I did that a lot. So, any point in the game, all these episodes, you can see I have backed up. I don't have them all backed up because... No, I don't want... No. I don't have them all backed up because there are 30 save files in however many episodes. Uh, but I do have a lot of them backed up. So, you can go to... Any part after the Dragon Palace, <laughs> yeah, the Dragon Palace, and uh, go into the episode, how everything was, which is really cool. But anyway, what I want to show is start from the beginning. This save file is a different color, and you can see that though it says start from the beginning, we have all of our ink, and we have 15 units of solar energy, but we have no brush techniques. This is kind of an enigma, but once we go inside, it will all make sense. Where are we? It got awfully quiet all of a sudden. I don't remember any place like this in the village. Well, we better keep our eyes peeled. You can use the control pad to look around. The two button changes your point of view. Boy, you really look so helpless. You sure you're going to be okay? Yes, I am, soon. Yep, that's right. We really did start from the beginning. I, I took the liberty of skipping past the beginning cutscenes because they're long and you already saw them before, and if you didn't, just go to the first episode and watch them again. And I'm not going to be showing that because this episode's going to be as uh, long enough as is. So this is New Game Plus. Let's go over here to skip this so I won't be having to talk over it in a bit. Um, this is New Game Plus. There are certain things that are special. Uh, first off, though we have full ink, 
it doesn't show, but we do, based on what was shown on the on the save file, we can't use our brush because we haven't learned it yet. But you can see we have 15 units of health. Our astral pouch carried over all the levels, all the upgrades. Our wallet upgrades also carried over. And that makes sense because we still have all that praise. Uh, once praise be, can be shown, you'll see that I'll have the same praise I had when I ended the Let's Play. And if we go up here, you can see I'm right, I have 913 praise. So that carries over. All of my things are upgraded, but my health is still not full because the sun fragments do not carry over. So you still have to find those throughout the game. I don't exactly know why they did this, but they did, and I'm fine with it. I'm not going to complain, like, ever about this game, unless there's a glitch. Um, but if we go in here, you can also see that we all of our items are still here. That's also nice, so in case you, you still want to use those golden peaches, you definitely still can. Actually, fun fact, I haven't shown the, uh, the death animation yet, which I should probably do soon. Maybe by the, my, by the end of this episode, I probably will. Uh, and our weapons also carry over, but tier 5 weapons, so Solar Flare, Thunder Beads, and Lightning, Thunder Edge, sorry, will carry over, and we'll keep the f our first weapon equipped, because our first weapon, come on. And our Holy Artifacts also sort of carry over. This is where the similarities and carryovers end, because some of our, our Holy Artifacts carry over, except for the Fog Pot, Water Tablet, Thieves Glove, and Fire Tablet. Those don't come along with it because they're all story items. The Fog Pot would allow you to warp around whenever you want, which the game designers didn't want, and can interrupt the story a little bit. Um, you also cannot get the Water Tablet because that allows for some other things. It's not necessarily as much of a story item, but it is unlocked by completing something in the story, so I can kind of see why that wasn't included. The Thieves' Glove, same difference, or same similarity. Uh, you first l learn that once you go into the Imperial Palace with Isun, you shrink down and you learn that he has abilities besides just talking your ear off, much like me. Um, but you get this by doing that, and then it's unlocked afterwards, so it's also a story unlockable. Next is the Fire Tablet. Having this would actually be detrimental in the beginning of the story. It would allow you to entirely skip the Kaguya side quest, or the main quest, actually. So you could entirely skip that, and there would always be that part of the game that was still open, even when you had to go to those areas to do something else. So I can, I can totally see why they didn't include that. Um, so that isn't carried over, but there's another thing that we never had before, the string of beads. This is given to us by gaining, by collecting every stray bead in the game, all 100. We get the string of beads, and once we equip this, our ink pot and solar energy become limitless, so we're pretty much invincible and we can spam brush techniques all day. Our attack pi power is times 10. So, it will allow us essentially to one-shot bosses. Does this actually do like an effect? Oh, it makes our health bar disappear. Okay, because we have no- we have unlimited health now. It doesn't even need to show. So, yeah, health bar, no need for that. We're invincible. Uh, next, I- let's see, there are a couple other things that carry over that you won't ne necessarily notice right off. Obviously, our, our solar energy, ink pots, astral pouch, yen, will carry over, but also our Demon Fangs. I have one Demon Fang, so you can kind of tell. Um, Demon Fangs, animals that will fed will be recorded in the Animal Tome, but they can be fed again. And the cool thing is, is if you have upgraded every single th attribute, you can just get money by feeding. Or, yeah, by feeding animals, not feeding. <laughs> so, that's, that's pretty cool. That's neat. Dojo Techniques, you all will also carry over. I can't show any of them because... One of the ones that doesn't carry over is Fleetfoot. I have no clue why. No clue at all. And my voice, my throat's getting a little bit dry from all this talking. It's been a while since I actively recorded. But, yeah, Fleetfoot does not carry over, along with Holy Eagle, which allows us to double jump. Digging Chant, Holy Falcon, which I believe is the thing that adds a hitbox to our double jump. And also Hardhead. Once again, these will allow us to sequence break, and they don't want that, so those are kept from us. Treasures that we've obtained throughout the adventure, will be kept as well, um, though they can be obtained again. So treasure chests that had treasures, now have treasures again. Obviously I showed our items tra uh, transfer, but 
mermaid coins don't, for the same reason that the fog pot is not in our possession right now, um, because it'll allow us to warp around when they don't want us to. Uh, the fish that we have fished with, what's his name, K Kokari, those carry over, and also key items, so quest items like the golden mushroom, the pinwheel, stuff like that, those will carry over, and uh, in case you want to complete those quest I quests, I guess. It says key items, and I assume that's what key items are, also this is kind of cool, it's like a, it's actually exactly like a magnet, that's cool, okay. Uh, next, let's see, I showed everything else, uh, there's one more thing. And this episode's going actually very fast for all the information I'm sharing. In tools, we have a ton of new items. We have all the karmic transformers that I showed us getting last episode. Uh, these these do different things. I'll be showing these because they're really cool. These are skins for Amaterasu. Yeah, skins. They allow us to change our forms and look awesome. The one, the later ones look amazing, but for the most part, the first, what is it, seven or six, they're all the, the canine warrior skins, so, yeah, I, I personally don't use the canine warrior skins, because they don't look all that great, in my opinion, but there are some that do. So, the first one, uh, you just earn by completing the game. This one is modeled after, J uh, canine warrior Jin. So it basically makes us a Shiba Inu. I believe Jin is like Hayabusa, I think? Maybe? I don't know, but it also changes our bark. So we sound cute. I'll, I'll raise, the, raise the volume so you can hear our bark. Isn't it cute? It's pretty adorable. Uh, we just get that for completing the game, so it doesn't matter how badly you did, you still get it. Also, I didn't mean to do that. Karmic Transformer 2 is also obtained by completing the game. This makes us... I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea what this dog is, but... Ugh. In my opinion, this one's the worst. <laughs> it gives us a big gullet and... Super block... Makes us super blocky. And what's worse is the bark. You guys ready for the bark? <sighs> yeah. Listen to that bark. It's... It's... <laughs> I guess if you just want to be funny, sure. You can be the the strongest sun god ever as Chi, the high-pitched dog, but I don't use it. This is where the Karmic Transformers getting, start getting good. Karmic Transformer number three gives us a Matarasu, but it gives us a Matarasu without any ink. So whenever you lose ink, you lose all your markings and your arm wings as well, and you become unmarked and just a white, snowy wolf. And this is what the skin makes you. It makes you that wolf. So you can see how the other people who don't believe in Matarasu see her. Very cool. And it, these do show up in cutscenes, by the way, so it's not just an aesthetic, it, well it is just an aesthetic thing, but it does show up in cutscenes, so you could be the weird high-pitched dog Chi in a cutscene, or you could be unmarked in a cutscene. Oh, and I also forgot, you earn this plane of Matarasu by earning an S rank for deaths. So if you have died, and, I, and this does count as using Astral Pouches, so like, if you use an Astral Pouch, you died. That counts. It's not a game over, it's Astral Pouch. Um, if you died any less than four times, you will get this skin. So it's very easy to obtain, as long as you aren't completely bad at the game, you'll do just fine. Number four models us after Shin, and we obtain this by getting an S rank for enemies defeated. So if we've defeated any number than 550 enemies, you will get this. It's actually pretty easy to obtain as long as you don't keep fleeing fights, and you do, I don't know, the side battles. So like the, um, the vent, not the vengeance slips, the, the things, the monster lists. If you do those, you'll be fine. Oh, and the bark is this. I didn't show the bark for Plain Amaterasu, but it's just Plain Amaterasu's bark. Number five is Ray, and he's like a beagle, or something. Some sort of basset hound? I guess he's a basset hound, I think. But it makes his bark actually pretty cool. I, I don't mind this one. I'll be honest, it's kind of cute, and it doesn't change her model that much. Except I think her legs are much, much longer. And it changes her bark to something that's that's very, very bearable. 
Although I don't really like how it lacks a tail, and it looks like the tail is just a knot. And you obtain this by getting an S rank for money gained. So if you have earned any more than 4 million yen, you will get this. Though, once again, this one is one of the easier ones to obtain, because you're going to be getting a lot of yen. As long, once again, as long as you're not skipping out on battles and you're doing pretty well on them, you will do just fine. Number six, or Tay, is obtained by getting an S rank on Demon Fangs, which means that you have to collect anywhere over 300 of them. This one is the one that most people miss, because if they skip battles, or if they're not interested in doing battles and they just mostly want to do the story, since you're not leveling up by doing most battles, there's no really big incentive to do them, except for money. And also, a lot of people don't know about the floral finishing system, or they think that it's power slash for all of them, and as soon as they discover that it's not, they don't try to experiment. So a lot of people miss this one, mainly just because of that that floral finisher reason. A lot of people don't know that th that 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 is in the game, and I was really worried about it early on, but then I found out I didn't need to worry since I'm doing the battles. I've probably obtained you know a couple hundred above that. I've probably obtained four five hundred, but it was fine. And I had a little reason to worry, but this one, its bark, sounds like this. I made it sound really cute at first, because I was like, it sounds like this, but no. It sounds like a dog you'd run away, want to run away from. I think this is a Rottweiler, too. Yeah. Number seven is a familiar face. It's Shirinui. If you get 4,500 praise or more, you will get Shirinui. Once again, this is something that a lot of people will and have and will continue to miss because they're not interested in getting praise. Or they get praise, but they don't get this much. They're not as perfectionist as most <laughs> Let's Players. But... Yeah, if you do that, you get a really sweet reward in, in the form of Sheer Nui. And the other two Karmic Transformers are equally epic. They are seriously really epic. Let's go ahead and get into those. At number 8 is my favorite. I'll just put that out there right now. This is my all-time favorite. Is Stone Statue Amaterasu. This one. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's... It's so good, and this is what I was talking about earlier about the developers going above and beyond the, their Call of Duty. They didn't have to put these in the game, but they did, and this is a really, really sweet reward. Playing through the game as Stone Statue of Matarasu is so, so good. It's it's fun. It changes all the cutscenes. It makes it look... It, it fits into the story a little bit as well, because it makes her like an actual animated stone statue. She's a stone statue that's been turned to life, by Sakuya, and she's literally a stone statue. It's 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 really neat. Um, but next, oh, and also you obtain this by getting another S rank on praise. So the last three you get, uh, you all get for doing the S rank on praise. Finally, number nine, Karmic Transformer Nine, which is 3D realistic presentation Amaterasu. This is the Ami that we saw in the the Capcom presentation in pre-alpha, where they had showed that trailer before the game was even in development. This is that Amaterasu, like verbatim. This is her. And you can play the game as this Amaterasu. That's good. <laughs> I can't really say anything more than that. It's good. It's, I mean, it's a little bit out of place in the game. I'll give it that. The, it looks very, very out of place in this art style. Um, it looks a little bit, I don't know, like a hack, honestly. But it's not a hack. It is something the developers put in. And it looks, it does look fine. And if you wanted to know what the game would have looked like, or how it would have felt as playing as that Amaterasu that you saw in the trailer, you can find out a little bit. Obviously, the art style of the entire game has not changed. That would be a gigantic update. But... It's, it's closer. You get to look at this face all the time. Not my face, but this face. All the time as you play through the game. And you can get a little bit of appreciation or distaste for what the game could have been. And that is all the Karmic Transformers. And that is New Game Plus for you guys. Uh, there is one thing I'd like to show. Mainly, I'll switch over here. Uh, not there. 
to this. Oh, and also Kar the Karmic Returner just turns you back into normal Monterasu. And I'm not going to be using that because I'm going to be using number 8, my favorite, for the rest of this. Not the episode because there's other stuff we need to do, but for the rest of what we're doing here. Though it is a little bit excessive, I don't need to go through the game here. I could cut this out. I want to show it because it's been a while. I'm not going to be showing the story because uh, it's incentive for you guys to go back and watch the first episode. But I would like to go over here showing this this model, this texture on screen for as long as possible because I have something I want to do. Let's go ahead and get this brush technique. Easily. Like, look how fast we're running through the, the first episode of the game, which I believe took 40 or 50 minutes, and we're running through it in seconds. Literally seconds. So much, so much extra time that I can be completely unnecessary and jump over this. Not... Is it Pagoda? I don't know. I don't know the name anymore. It's been a while since I've played this game because of my vacation slash pro procrastination slash next let's play preparation. There's the lag again. And there's the swimming again. If you ever wanted to see a stone float besides pumice, this is it. You're seeing a stone float. Let's uh, get over there. There we go. We don't have to get the astral pouch again because it, we already have it. And we can go, th go through here. So what I wanted to show, I'm not just unnecessarily going through here, I wanted to prove a point and also discover something for myself. I was wondering if the stray beads are actually still here. Now if you go into the menu, I mean, it's obvious that you've collected them all, but I was just wondering, as my own curiosity, what, what is in those chests now? What those chests are? Are the chests gone? Are they still there but they have other stuff in them? Or do they have stray beads that you can recollect and get 200 stray beads? Well the answer is you can't. This is where the first stray bead in the game was, where I first got one, and it's not there. So you can't obtain any more stray beads. Actually, did I tell did I say this? I'm not sure if I said this, but in in the let's play, uh, how I how I made sure all of the text boxes were the same size is holding my thumb on the screen. I would go back to the the first episode hold my thumb on the screen to the bottom left corner of one of the text boxes, then go into my editing software and match that up. Yeah, that's that's what I did. And it worked. It worked very well. They're, they're, they are different, but they're very close to each other. Um, I, there was a way that I could have done it that would have worked, but it was just something I did in the first episode, and it stuck. I think I've told that story before, but whatever. There is one more thing I would like to show before I can consider this series at an end. However, it's going to have to wait until next time. I originally wanted to fit both uh, this episode with New Game Plus and the glitches of Okami into one video, but after showing off New Game Plus and running up to 30 minutes, uh, I feel like it would be best if I say if I split them up into two parts. So we're going to be doing that. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Paladin, this is Okami, and I will see you guys next time for the finale of this series where I show off the very fun non-graphical glitches of the game. See you guys then!